cafe streams. Well, I see the Gouet's piece in the middle. I think sort of you should it. review some of the character design for uh, Necrobarista. Necrobarista. Yeah, okay. it's actually it's actually a French game, I think. But I think I think one of the characters in that uh, matches pretty closely to what you're trying to do, and and it, and they it was done really well. Okay, let me check that then. Uh, Necrobarista. Which character was it? Uh, it was the main one, I think. The main character. This yeah. One? Yeah. Medic Jam. Yeah, uh, she's like she's like really outwardly like nice and bubbly, but like she's like super like she's an asshole to her friends, but like not actually an asshole. Yeah, I get you. Huh. Interesting. Do so you suggest playing it or just the character design? It's the character design is cool. I enjoyed it. I I, I got burned out because uh, I don't like visual novels type games, even if they're good. <laughs> yeah, I can like, I can relate to that. Yeah, I'm I'm one of the people who got bored of reading Berserk. So. Hmm. Oh, hey, definitely interesting. I'll uh I'll you know what? Let me. I have a list of games to play, so I can just. Uh, add Necro Barista on, on, in the Necro Barista. barista. Boom. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of the cafe ambience. That's uh, more like for the character. I really like uh, the idea of uh, like Asian occult. Um, like, if you take uh, in Okami, like the demon world and stuff like that. There, there's, you know, that, that red, that black, and white, and the the whole thing with the tent uh, inscriptions I really like, and the paintbrush style I, I really like as well. There was uh, a VTuber it's called uh, Shiki something. Miyoshino. Shiki... Me Yoshino. Yeah. She has a an outfit that I really like. Because it has this um thing that is reminiscent of Hanafuda and kind of traditional outfit, but it, it is something that is very modern overhaul. But you, you see with like the transparent textile and uh just the shapes and stuff oh, VTuber. But... yeah yeah oh I, th I thought this was your stream and i'm like oh fuck you're famous <laughs> oh no i wish perhaps someday i wish yeah someday <laughs> i don't know i would hate being famous because like i'd have to go on to like i i'm i'm really prone to like burning out so like i just come on to stream and go hey guys i don't want to stream and then people would be like no you gotta and then i'd stream and then i'd feel like shit and then i would resent them for it mm-hmm I, I get you. But I I definitely I. The thing is, I really don't mind as long as there's activity. If there's activity, then it's fine. And if people enjoy the stream and I can do something that that's, you know, that has some quality to it, then that's good enough for me. Yeah, I I don't know. I play games that aren't really good for streaming. Mm, I get you. Well, I, I played the inscription. I definitely feel like this game is better as a, a video let's play, maybe, than, than a stream, but <clears throat> I don't know. Also, I, I have made a lot of researches on stream cards. There was this uh, whole aesthetic with menus that I really like. Uh, yeah, I like the way your stream cards look right now. Yeah, I I kind of made most of my about page right now. I just need to do the rules. But I kind of uh, inspired myself of uh, do things with like the borders, the framing and stuff like that. And having kind of a dynamic uh, font. And that's what I use for these things. And then I made like some uh, logos 
the dark rights. Dilute and so crates. right now, it right now it looks like panel a bad page. Right now it looks oh. like that. Uh, oh. I am on a four K screen. A screen so. Hmm. And I really like what I did with the click here. Like the demonic, yeah. Demonic aspect to it. It's cute. Hmm. Yep. Anyway, that's kind of what I have right now. Yes. Hmm. Pretty. I'm definitely looking for a commission, but I don't know. I don't know where. To ask. Twitter. Twitter, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but Twitter requires knowing the, like, knowing an artist that has commission open. Mm hmm That's the only way to go about it. Just finding people. I do that for people all the time. Yeah. Or try to, anyway. But there's, I, I was uh, hesitant to try that live to the Discord community, where people are... Uh, have uh yeah i don't know have uh, fun how do you say they have commissioned things i i don't know what to say <laughs> i mean it's just con commissioning people there's nothing there's nothing like i don't know there's no specific thing for it i guess I wish there was like a website that like tracked artists that gave commission as in, in, in like different styles. That would probably be. It's called Skeb. Oh. That's for Japan. Oh. That's for Japanese artists mostly. Oh. Yeah, I figured that would was... be really popular because it's like, hey, I want comic comic style art done in like a fucking X Y Z style, and it's like. I feel like the live 2D gods do not appreciate me tr being becoming traitor and going to three dimensions because for whatever reason, uh, uh, VTube or VTube Studio does not want knows my webcam exists, right? But it refuses to start it, so I don't mm -hmm. know if. Oh wait, nope. It's I mean I literally updated this yesterday and uh, ex. Implements experimental webcam hand tracking, so at some point one of their updates broke my computer's ability to detect the webcam, so I can't use this program anymore. I don't know if that's going to change if I restart my computer, but it's not a driver issue because I just turned on, just tried VC face again, and it worked immediately. But I was also wondering why is it that it was lagging so much when I used face rig? So, um, that's kind of a bummer. I don't mm. know how to fix this, uh, except I don't even know if reinstalling, um, if reinstalling VTube Studio is going to change much, since the main problem seems to be that it doesn't want to turn on my webcam. I wonder also if maybe... Where's device manager? Device manager. Update driver. So it's not that. I'm doing a terrible job selling 2D or live 2D software. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Because so far, okay. both main programs have been garbage. Let's see if PRPR Live still wor or still works. That's going to be funny if it doesn't, because this one <laughs> was the one that I was going to use to replace Face Rig. Yeah. So this is PRPR Live. Yeah. I'm going to laugh if this breaks too, actually. Not really. This one needs to be manually, has to have the webcam manually activated though. 
Face Capture Settings. USB. You know, I was kind of doing. I was doing that thing where I was like, hmm, maybe I should become a live streamer. Um, there we go. But I realized that I don't think it would work for me because after like the seventeenth, like, oh, we're gonna play Resident Evil Four stream. I think everyone would just end up leaving. Why would they leave your stream after the fourth Let's Play Resident Evil? I mean, if they're there to like, if they like survival horror stuff, then I don't see what the problem would be. Nah, I mean, I. That that's always the thing is I feel like if I just played, especially specifically Resident Evil Four, if I just played that over and over again, I feel like that would get old for a lot of people. You never but know. Would you only want to to play that game? And the the thing is too, it's like if you're having fun, there's. Really, there's, there's n not much more you need, you know, if you're having fun streaming and there's enough people that you're happy about it. Yeah. I'm so glad one of these programs won't work to write out the box. <laughs> <laughs> so at least... Yeah, this one seems like it, it works great. In fact, this was actually the one I was going to suggest that you try using, <laughs> uh, Pierre Pierre Life, because it is uh -huh. the one that a that uh you don't know this person, but when we used to play Dirty Bomb, there was a community manager named uh, Rachel Warmonic who used to work for Nexon. She kind of floated around after she got laid off from Nexon, but she ended up becoming a VTuber and she commissioned and has this avatar that has sort of an Egyptian aesthetic. And uh -huh. I know she uses this program because this is the one that she's active on on Steam like all the time and it has like many thousands of hours on it. The only reason I was kind of sketchy about this one is because I noticed that when I'm playing some really heavy-duty games, sometimes the program has a tendency to freeze up. Now, to be fair, I do have a fairly old, by today's standards, rig, so it could, it might not even be the pro program's fault. It could just be that my computer is locking up. The last time I checked their news, they were supposed to be adding workshop integration, so I didn't need to rip uh rip avatars from Facebook anymore, but they still have not done that. But, like I said, it's pretty easy to do. All you would have to do is to open up the uh, folder section where the models are kept for Peer Peer Life. You would just need to figure out which one of them they are for the mods, in, for the workshop mods for FaceRig. And then it's just a matter of copying and pasting. But they do and have... I was just wondering, what do the DLCs do? The DLCs for FaceRig? Or for... For Pure Pure Life. Let me see what they are. Um, I didn't purchase any of the DLCs for Pure Pure Life, and I, if I recall correctly, part of the reason I didn't is because... The one over here, which is the Pure Pure Life game Animoji, I think, was the one that they marketed as being a thing that was made specifically for... VTubers that is supposed to improve uh, the quality of the view of the stream it says here higher capture accuracy, more stable eye tracking, and more accurate capture of field chill expressions. However, if you look at the reviews, they are kind of mixed. Some people are experiencing a better time with it. Some people are not. Um, I don't it's really whisking. with the uh. DLC for Peer Peer Live, the um, game and emoji thing. That's supposed yeah. to improve the live 2D aspect for, for like VTubers and such. Um, supposedly, it's supposed to increase to improve things like facial tracking. But I'm not sure if it does or not. Um, people are having mixed results, and I did not feel like spending ten dollars to test if that were the case, especially at least for my purposes, what this can do right now is fine. But um, that might be an option to try out to see if that's if you if that give you gives you anything as far as um, better 
or I don't know, better frame rate, I guess. The other one, yeah. The other one, the PR PR Live PR Node mod. I don't know what this is. I think because PR PR connects to an online community of live 2D avatars, that this might be. For... They say that the English language isn't available, though. So yeah, that's a thing. They, someone in the comments was like, if you're an English user trying your luck to figure this out, don't bother. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's written in Chinese. And even, even if you like, you could see right here in the stream where there is an, you can make an account for it and everything, but um, it doesn't have support for non-Chinese users or non-Chinese speakers, basically. I get you. But and the other, the final one is just uh, some free animal models. Hmm. And that is Pierre Pierre Life. Okay. I'm kind. Of, I'm still kind of burned at the uh, at the um other one. The uh, VTube Studio thing is broken. I don't know why it's broken right now. I bet you that after I end the stream and when I come back to it later, it's going to start working again for no reason. <laughs> Just because these programs have a tendency to spite me like that. But, uh, oh yeah, the other thing I was going to show you. Um, for making your own Live 2D avatar, it is called Cubism. And there is a free version and a subscription version. Which is... We're gonna link go to it through not not that cubism, cubism, live two D. You probably already saw from me searching this that people have already cracked this program, but officially, if you want to use live two D cubism, you can download a tree file version, which is the full version of live two B two D cubism for 42 days, after which you can keep using the free version, which basically limits you in the amount of layers you can put in your avatar and basically how detailed it is. Which is not too okay. bad if... Which is not too bad if you're going to make a character like this one. This is actually a fairly simple model. And you could also go to the site and download a bunch of sample models. In fact, a bunch of the workshop characters are in fact pre-made assets by they're already made by Cubism, which are right here. This one looks like their newest one, because I've never seen this one before. This is a basic 90s era flash animation character. And you got these characters here. And also some male models. And also Hatsu a official Hatsune Miku one. So most people will basically just get one of these to try out and to kind of get used to it and then use them as a base to make their own live 2D avatar. And I think actually they even have guides for making your own avatar which use those things as a base as like an example of this is how you do this, this is how you do that. Mm -hmm. Live 2D is actually, or whatever this company is, whatever the company's real name is, they have live 2D branding everywhere but... They're actually very, really nice as with, with with regard to guides and teaching people how to make their own avatars. It is... If I were to simplify the process, it's basically making each individual piece one at a time and then arranging them and then creating the bones for them. Uni, or Uni showed me what her Live 2D avatar looks like when it's broken down and it pretty much... It's like that. It's just a series of many, 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 many layers which are then arranged and then animated in such a way to give the illusion of being three-dimensional. And what having a free version of this program does is it limits to you to where you can only have so many of those layers where, say, looking at this one right here, her face and head and the hair are mostly where the layers are centrate, or are concentrated so that when she moves her head around, her hair moves around as if it has real real physics. But I'm willing uh -huh. to bet that her body is probably only like 
two or three layers. Like, you can move her arms, but her clothes don't move along with it or anything. Huh. But okay. if my... But um, if you were to say... And I think I have it loaded here. I don't have it loaded here, but Kiritan, for example, has a lot of layers. These individual hairs move. Her ears move when she, when she blinks. Her eyes move. The eyes actually change. You can actually change the irises of the eyes, etc. And other things too, like these move, these move, the clothes move. And the other model that I was showing earlier before face rig started to crap out on me, which I'm going to bring up again really quick, has a lot of layers. I could tell that it was, it was actually, it's also, I think, a sample character made by Live2D because it, because otherwise it would have had to you would have had to make it using the free version of this program. Is it here? It's probably not here. So I know there is also a website where you can borrow or use people's Live 2D avatars as long as you follow their terms of service. But... Hmm... <laughs> Let me just load up this character and move her around a little bit. I appreciate that whatever I did earlier, it's making this face rig work as it was supposed to on the first try now, although I need to fix this again. There we go. So we're going to load up this character again. See all that? You can't uh, make or you can't sweat. You, I'm pretty sure you cannot make an avatar of this level of detail with just the free version. That's the one that requires a subscription or a um, <coughs> pirated version. But she has a lot of things. She has a lot of pre-made. Uh, live movement. She can do. She can smile like that. She has blushing effects. Mm -hmm. She has a chair in the background because this was actually a avatar that I'm pretty sure was made with the intention of being a VTuber, someone's VTuber model. She has more than one hairstyle as well, and also this. Blushing effects. Mm -hmm. Good God. And also the eyes, which I don't know how to turn the eyes off now. Great. Oh, there they are. Hard eyes. Hmm. <laughs> and there are more there are far more complicated avatars in this too that are out there are possible using live two D stuff. I mean, that's how they make all these girls frontline characters after all. <laughs> Yeah. I'm still kind of surprised that Face Rig is actually performing better than. Eh, who knows? I'll figure out what's going on one of these days. With that out of the way, I'm now going to show you, or go ahead and look behind the veil regarding how the uh, 3D stuff does it works. So, Fearwood Studio recently updated their program. They It's now officially released. It's no longer in beta. The only problem is people are not very happy with the release because it has they completely changed some of the systems. I'll show you what I mean really quick because it runs. It's just... I don't think it's necessarily bad. It's just different. Different in a way that a lot of people are not used to because beta viewroid's been out for a while. Also, it did break a lot of people's custom assets that they were making in the process. We're going to launch Vroid, and it's kind of um, overwhelming at first, but you kind of get used to it. I don't like the fact that they got rid of the darker aesthetic and made everything white, though. That's kind of annoying me. 
but there's these... no way to change it to dark not mode. As, not as far as I found. The closest so far is just this thing, which is to make the background of the avatar system itself dark, which is I don't like. But they did make it a lot more beginner friendly, where now instead of throwing you straight into the workspace like say Photoshop or something, it sets you off it starts you off first with a bunch with many, many pre made assets. So you can design your character from scratch without having to make anything initially. So I'm already making a generic uh, brunette girl with a ponytail. There's only two okay. body types here, which is kind of annoying. They also removed the pantsuit. But you can always put those back. You can actually edit the clothes completely by or com, com, edit the clothes and body completely. It just requires maybe, you know, having a graphic tablet or being really good with a mouse because you're going to literally draw the character models. And then you can choose clothing sets here. Huh. There's but what would you use for a character made in V-Raid for the tracking? What would you use? What would I use? Do I mean... Yeah, wh which program would you use once you have your your character in V-Raid? Oh, you would use VC Face, which is what this is. VC Face is also free. Veroids also free. Um, and basically what you do with VC faces, all you do is you finish creating an avatar in Veroid. And you load it here into VC face by literally just dragging it into the folder. You make sure it shows up here in the avatar section, which is the first thing that pops up. You push start. And then I just need to go and need to man... Oh, I forgot. You don't need to manually turn on the tracking, it automatically detects your webcam and starts tracking. But what you do need to do is to manually set it up so that it activates the virtual camera so you can use it on, uh, say, Discord. I found out that I used to do it that way to run it on OBS, but I found out that you don't need to use green screen to use an OBS. All you have to do is use transparency mode, which is what you see right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, you can see, actually see there's actually two of me now. And I could probably yeah. mirror motion, which means I can go look down at... Oh, never mind, I can't do that. Well, anyway. So that's what you use to... So if I were to save this character right now and to load her up and put her in the folder for VC face, she would pop up here. But, um... I don't think the... For Vroid Studio, full release is necessarily worse. If anything, I really do think that they succeeded in making it more user-friendly than the beta version. It's just that everything is different, and I, this is a personal thing. I don't like how they made the characters more Genshin Impact-ish by default, where they have very minimal shading and their face is more manga-style. But that's a very small thing. The way Viroid Beta looked was like this, which I also have a copy of, which I also downloaded a copy of, which is also free. I'm going to load the character I was working on that was going, that's eventually going to be my personal VTuber avatar. You can probably guess who she's probably based on. Uh huh. <laughs> Please don't crash on me, Vroid. I'm going to be upset. It's not going to crash, though. It's just trying to run my old processor. And at first, I thought I was kind of afraid that I'd have to learn Blender and other uh, traditional 3D modeling applications to get into this stuff, but it's all here, really. Um, doing things like editing the eyes, eye, eyes, expressions, or not the expressions, but the uh, body, skin, eye color, hair, etc. is all done as if you were pretty much drawing them or painting them in real time. What I did for the eyes, for example, was... One second.
where is that's mouth show me the eyes please I'm thinking I it's my order food <laughs> because I don't want to cook <laughs> oh is it dinner time over there I probably I actually yeah, yeah. need to get lunch yeah it's 8, 8 p.m. oh I'm sorry for keeping and you I've only had breakfast no don't try you should go eat then I mean yeah I know I'm still struggling to have two meals a day but hopefully it will get better as time goes I've been better this week though you've been better or bad better because oh. last week I only had barely one meal a day. Aw, oh, Fox. Yeah, I know. And it's a work in progress, right? I guess. Here we go. I don't know why it took me so long to find this, but... Yeah. When I went to the dark office, you know, for like my anxiety meds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh... Because we need to do a checkup like every month. Mm -hmm. And uh, she made me wait myself. I definitely lost a few kilos, but. Hmm. <sighs> anyway. To. Hopefully, the new dose helps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Why is it funny? <laughs> Oh, nothing. I, I don't know why I laughed at that. Sorry. <laughs> this is fine. All I was going to say is um, you basically draw directly onto the thing, and I decided to make the eyes myself, and I also had... I basically had the references, which is the other versions of Jody I had lying around up at the same time. Used the dropper tool to uh -huh. get the exact colorations that Tom used when he first uh, drew the character. And I also had a YouTube up that explained to me basically what all these buttons did. Because I was pretty overwhelmed when I first did this, but then after a while it was just like... Once you know what they do, it's like any other paint pro program, really. I do remember, though, that I actually fucked up when I was making this, and I didn't realize that you could mirror, push the mirror button so that what you do on one eye gets translated to the rest, to the other eye. And thankfully, yeah. you can do this for the rest of the body, too, so you don't need to draw everything by hand. You can just draw one half of them. This would be great for yeah. stuff like tongue, clothes, you know, usual. So what I ended up having yeah. to do, which you can, what I ended up having to do, and which was good to find out anyway, was you can actually save the texture in this program, and you can import it into a different program like Krita, Adobe Photoshop, what have you. And you could choose to just edit the edit them there and then you can import it back into Vroid and then import and then put it onto the character. But as you could see, um this is definitely not as user friendly as the official release. It took some getting used to and I yeah really can't speak to as to whether or not it's more stable because my computer is old by today's standards but it all pretty much works the same way you use this button here to create a different group of hairs and I noticed that I did it the hard way where when I was making her hair I did it all in one group so these are all strand these are all part all of these strands are individual there's like dozens of them and the reason why they're numbered that way is because that's how many I deleted in the process of making her hair. What I found that the people actually do is they make them eat one portion at a time. They'll do like the back hair and that'll be one section. Then they'll add another procedural group or another freehand group and they'll do the front hair or do the sideburns or they'll do the twin tails or stuff like that. Okay. And clothing, they pretty much do the same thing. Or what people are now doing, if you ever heard of Booth, Booth is a online website where people create and upload and sell clothes for uh, Vroid avatars. So you can either, so some people just buy the assets, fit it onto their character, make sure it fits properly, and they work on everything else themselves. And that, huh. 
It's basically a uh, Vroid. I would. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. In some ways, it almost feels like. I mean, I think. I'm assuming Live 2D has a similar thing too, where you can buy assets and just stick them together, like as if you're playing with dolls or playing with Legos. I the only reason, only reason I can't attest to that is because I myself have not gotten the Cubism program. Uni might have more information on that though. I might thanks Mm-hmm. And this so far took me around five hours of work, but that was because that was also the same day that I was pretty much trying to teach myself how to work it. But I guess the other reason I was really into through the three D being a 3D tuber instead of a live 2D tuber is the fact that I can actually port this into VR chat because uh, Fia, who you've probably seen videos, I've seen me post videos around videos of around a lot. The avatar she uses for VR chat and she uses for her show, she actually made in Vroid first, which I thought was really cool. Okay, yeah. So that uh, ends my preview of um, our short introduction to the world of VTubing and how to get into it from a live 2D perspective or a like, 3D perspective. It's really cool that most of the stuff that I showed is actually free, or if not free, then relatively cheap. Yeah, definitely. Thanks yeah. a lot, by the way, for like uh, the tutorial. Uh, yeah. Definitely very helpful. No problem. I'll, I think I might try some v Right Studio, just just have fun in it. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. actually really fun to just mess around with, to be perfectly honest. Uh, feel free to also try the official release version, which is on Steam. And if, and they also, the developers, I think the developers of VRoid are actually Pixiv themselves, because for some reason there's Pixiv branding all over the place. They also have links to the old beta versions if you want to try those out to see if that suits you instead. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed the distinction, but for whatever reason, it's the main difference I saw between the two is that for the base models, faces look a little bit different, more cartoony in the official version, and also there's no shading in the official version by comparison. I don't know. I guess they did that to appeal more to uh, the kids that are... Anime? The more anime-ish. I don't know. I mean, this model is an official Vroid model. I don't know why they didn't just keep that to begin with, but, you know, whatever. I don't think they... I think they're doing a pretty good job, and I like the fact that they decide to release all this stuff for free. They could totally make bank if they were like, no, this requires a subscription now, but they didn't. And they don't seem to have any plans to do that, so good on them, you know? Yeah. Also, another thing that I noticed... And this is might be small since you're planning on commissioning your own avatar anyway. Um, let's go to here really quick. For some reason, Live 2D is really particular about their characters and they're very strict in what you can use their avatars for. But then I checked out what the permissions were for you for use for the Vroid avatars, right? And um, yeah. I discovered this by accident. Uh, where are they? Where are the Vroid avatar characters? They're here somewhere. It's not SDK, it's... It is... Is it this one? Ah, here we go. Sample models. <clears throat> Are you okay? I'm just coughing as I point in this general direction. I don't know. <laughs> yes. I, I just yes. I just thought that was Yes. Funny. I, I thought it was yeah. really funny that they're like, that's totally okay. It's okay. You can use our av our sample avatars for loot shit. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you can because, use it for everything. Because if you go to the Vroid <laughs> section, they're really anal. They're like, you may not use it for this, for this, for this. We're going to send our lawyers on you if you do this. And I'm just like, okay, protecting your copyrights, protecting your reputation. And then Vroid's like, we, we don't give a shit. We literally run a website where people post porn every day. We don't care. <laughs> Yeah. Not that I would ever uh, abuse my the sam- uh, avatar sample A for that purpose, you know. <laughs> but um, also that's the other thing I guess I didn't show. But let me go ahead and load up Vroid, and you know what? Um, I'm going to let me load up Vroid again. This is also really useful, and I think you could do this for with Cubism also, for the f- explicit fact that. As I mentioned earlier, you would need to, you would have to, all you have to do is take the models, stuff it in the folder for Cubism, and load them. So you can resave them so they would work on these other programs using for actually animating them. But you could pretty much, I'm pretty much going to reload Avatar Sample A really quick. And for the purposes of learning, of self teaching yourself how to make your own avatar or to be better at doing them you could load up any avatar once this stops load once it stops um loading ironically you can load up any avatar let's say go to the eyes People wondered why I got 30, why I chose to get 32 gigs of RAM for my computer, and this is the reason why. I can't imagine how long this would have taken to open up if I was still had 16. Yeah. But you can open up any of these pre-made avatars, and you can open and you can go through basically how they made them. Huh. With the layers named in mm-hmm. in. Japanese. Well, they're written in Japanese, but it's just. Chinese? Oh, they're written yeah. in Japanese. Japanese. Vroid's a uh, Japanese program. But you can open up the layers and you can see how they actually designed everything, which I thought was really neat. Like, That's this is cool. her eye texture. But let's go to the hair texture and you can. I'll show you. This is how they designed their hair. So I thought it took it took me five hours to learn how to make hair for my character, but then I looked at this and I'm like, holy shit! This hair took must have taken them for God knows how long. Look, because and also the fact that also yeah the physics, the physics of how the hair moves around and stuff, all custom made. The bangs themselves oh. are like. <laughs> All that cool shit. Look at that. Good God. Yeah. And then you go to... Even like the texture of the hair is like... Let's take a look at the texture of the hair. Look at this shit. Yeah. They have four different textures for the hair. It's not... At first I thought they just like... Drew a line or something on her head. But they didn't. Each individual strand... Well, the strands are a lot thicker than they appear. But... Like this is still that's one. This is one separate hair, and this one over here is one separate hair. This is one separate hair here, and they like drew the highlights in. At the same time, you can kind of see from this it's really not that difficult, quote unquote. You don't. Mm. You literally just draw a line, and you decide you put a base layer, right, a base color, with a trans with a um, gradient, and then you just draw the highlights in there. Nothing too expensive. Yeah. And the clothes are kind of the same. The clothes, I guess, are the parts where it gets hard because um, this is the uh, clothing texture for the hoodie, which, once again, they've literally just drew... They, You can either draw it in a separate program or you can draw it straight on here. Like, see? Mm. Yeah. And it will be laid out like that. And this gray area is the part that does not show up in the model, while this area that's lit up is the part that does show up in the model. And in order to make it fit your character, you do need to do a little, or either you or the person you commissioned has to do a little trial and error to make it fit. 
this mm -hmm. there is actually no new so model. you need to, to write slut on it right i could write slut <laughs> on it if i really want to <laughs> that's you're mean <laughs> How could you do that to poor character default female one? <laughs> and uh, also, I did find out that it's not that um, this character, unfor that this character's uh, inner clothing, her uh, little uh, undershirt there, is baked into her character model. As in, that is her skin. What we are looking at is not an undershirt. It is literally her skin. She. She is really hardcore and got a full, uh, what what you call it, a full body cask tattoo, more or less. And I can't. Where did I see that? I think it's actually on body editor. I found this by accident when I was trying to figure out where's your underclothes <laughs> texture. <clears throat> Check that shit out. Oh, actually, those are her thigh highs and her socks too. You probably wouldn't have even noticed that because they're covered in in loafers, which are also a separate clothing item. But like Uni was saying huh. with live TD cubism, people go out of their way to make clothes and make parts for everything, even if you can't physically see it. You know, just to add a little bit to the immersion and to the realism, and be like, "Wow, this character is a full character." Mm. <laughs> so. And yes, I too can fuck around here and be like, well, you can't actually see Lots. that. It's, it's too dark, but uh, it would be, I think it would, it would think it would be right here. How do I? Hmm. One second. It's probably... You guys are bullying the poor virtual woman. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing this is not inscription, so they don't have thoughts of their own. They can't get angry at me, right? Whatever lets you sleep at night. I don't mm -hmm. sleep at night. So, ha. <laughs> is it opacity? I have tricked you. You can't see it because for whatever reason the color rate I wonder something is keeping because I know I'm drawing on it. I mean you could see it as much. I just don't know what's causing that, but it should be updating here on the character model. Well, in theory it should be. My guess is that maybe I'm not selecting the act. Oh, that's why. That wasn't the layer of the... That layer I chose was probably not the layer of her where her skin and undershirt actually is. That's why it was drawing on top of it instead of... There we go. <laughs> this is horrible. But yeah, so that was Live 2D Cubism and Face Rig and Pierre Pierre Live and V and the VTube Studio, which is disappointing me right now, and I'm still kind of agitated that it wouldn't detect my webcam because every other program sure as hell is detecting my program, <laughs> detecting my webcam. Yeah. And this is Vroid Studio for both the beta versions, which I'm still using, and also the the official release version, which is currently out on Steam. And oh, thanks a lot. That was very helpful. No problem. I'm glad that you found it informative. I'm sure yeah, if anyone, I'm sure if anyone stumbles upon this Twitch Twitch channel, they're also probably going to find it informative too. Maybe I don't know, or they're going to think we're a bunch of dorks. Mm -hmm. But um, with that, I'm going to go grab lunch. I'll be on Discord on my phone as you. Uh, on my phone if you want to talk or hang out more. Steel, thanks okay. for joining us and uh, have a good day. Have a good day. Yeah. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ada, ada.